Today I'll be covering a open source project that decided to port itself over to Rust from C++. It's called the Fish Shell. We're going to go through and answer questions like what is the Fish Shell project? Was it successful in this porting? Why did they make this decision? And are there any benefits? This is definitely a very ambitious task with a lot of pushback, especially in the beginning as some of the maintainers felt like they couldn't help anymore. Let's get into this. For those of you who haven't used Fish Shell, it's a great user-friendly command line shell for Linux, Mac OS, and other operating systems. Some of the highlights here are things like tab completions, syntax highlighting, auto suggestions, searchable history, and even a web configuration that provides a browser-based interface to customize behavior and experience in the shell. It's available for a lot of different distributions as packages, but now these packages are being moved to Rust completely. As you can tell here, we have macOS, Linux, BSD, Windows sources. Now, one thing I'll mention is the Sigwin version in Rust will not work anymore. And here is the official project repository. The Fish Shell is a public open source project. And one thing you'll notice on the right hand side is the languages it's built in. This used to be all C++, but notice 71.1% is now Rust based. What was the decision here? Well, after nearly 20 years of development on February 19, 2023, Ridiculous Fish made the post that I think we should transition to Rust and aim to have it done by the next major release, which is really cool as we're seeing this next major release that was actually made about four or five days ago. And this was the initial decision put forth in order to port things to Rust. A lot of reviewers took place and some back and forth happened here. So some of the reasons here include nobody really likes C++ or C make. There's no clear path for getting off the old tool chains every year. The pain will get worse. Part of the maintainability and future proofing argument, C++ is becoming a legacy language and finding contributors in the future will become difficult. While Rust has an active and growing community. Another reason Rust is what we need to turn on concurrent function execution. And finally being written in Rust will help fish continue to be perceived as modern and relevant. Then in order to prove it could work, they ported over a few things in a pull request to Rust and the discussions began. Again, this is all last year in 2023. We're gonna get an update here today about how and if they were successful in porting, but this is currently the decision that they made, which was yes, but that decision wasn't made until they got some pushback because there were quite a few comments back and forth talking about arguments against porting to Rust, including compatibility issues, distro packaging complexities, increased effort and potential risks, aka porting such a massive project like this is just a huge undertaking with hundreds and hundreds of hours of work, which we know is true because it took a year to do. There's also some high level limitations that were brought up in Rust, including not providing native support for low level operations like fork, pull, select, epoll, KQ, which are critical for fish. There's some other challenges from community contributors. Some, a lot of the core contributors were just not familiar with Rust and the transition would cause them to lose a lot of productivity because they'd have to either go relearn the language or stop contributing. Anyways, with all of these significant arguments against porting to Rust, as I was reading through all the back and forth in the comments section here, whenever this rewrite into Rust post was initially made, I did find it funny that Ridiculous Fish here posted a nice meme as it was obligatory, which was two posts, one from an RSS feed that says, have you considered rewriting it in Rust? And including this post is funny because it's just an exaggeration of the trend of everything going over to Rust and Rust enthusiasts suggesting to rewrite every software in Rust. Funnily enough, Fish does get written, rewritten in Rust, but that's all right because they did it in such a way that it really made sense for them and the team and they had long discussions and this was no easy undertaking. But also the memification highlights the birth of the RIIR meme, which just stands for rewriting it in Rust, question mark. Even giving us examples like rewriting Tor. Yep, Tor, the very large critical infrastructure that keeps journalists, criminals, schizophrenics, and piracy, wait, cross that out, privacy activists, anonymous has been asked to rewrite their software. This is a sarcastic example, reinforcing the absurdity that it would take to actually rewrite some massive project and the clear implications that happen with doing so in critical software. I mean, it always kind of breaks down to just a few things that everyone talks about when saying we should port to Rust. And those include memory safety, concurrency, modern language features, newer built-in tools with a strong package manager for developer productivity, and just long-term maintainability. Those are all great. With this meme continuing in a public repository called Why Not Rewrite It in Rust, 
and asks you, are you an author or contributor to a software project? Have you ever been asked to rewrite or consider rewriting your project in Rust? If so, you may be a victim of RIIR agenda that is sweeping the web. If this happened, please report it so something can be done. Just another hilarious meme that has taken place. But this meme has completely played itself out on the fish shell, which I am personally a very big fan of. I've used it in the past. For example, here, I do have it built in for when I'm using the Cosmic Rust desktop on Fedora. Now I'll be using the Rust-based fish shell in order to make things work. What I like about fish is just makes things super easy. You hit tab, you get all your commands. It's wonderful in that sense and fashion. Love the way that they do that. You can also just start writing stuff. For example, if I wanted to run something from Cosmic, I can see all the different Cosmic applets and commands, and it tells you if it's a command link, a command, a directory, whatever. It just works. The color coding is great. The listing is great. The auto completion is awesome too. Let's just say I did this. I can look and see, oh, do I want desktop? Do I want documents? I just tab over one more time, and it just makes things super easy. And I can continue to view my system and explore things, especially if I don't know where things sit. For example, I can do Etsy, take a look at everything located in Etsy. We'll go into the kernel folder, list things out, check out the install D. You also get color coding to tell you whether or not you're about to type in the correct command. Look, L is not a command found. It just shows you in red that it's not there anyway. It shortens up things in the shell as well. And this is a feature of ZSH as well where the syntax highlighting and error detection is happening while you're typing the commands. And if I want to use a command, let's just say git. Well, I don't have git installed, so it's red. But it does suggest something. Watch, gi. So there's this gids tool command that I can use. So auto completion for the commands, I just absolutely like that because can't even keep track of what Linux system I'm using anymore between Fedora, Ubuntu, and Arch Linux. It's nice to know what packages I have installed before trying to use them. There's also the math function, which is hilarious to me. You can do things like math, for example, in the shell itself. I just did math and then a string that says 10 divided by 10 and it just gave me an answer. You can do a little bit more complex math too. Let's multiply, divide, and add all at the same time. And sure enough, I got 11. You can even write scripts with loops and conditionals and the fish commands come with the web-based browser that gets started if you wanna launch it. And you can easily run through the entire configuration directly in your browser. It's a fantastic way of making edits, including theming support. That way you can enjoy your favorite colors, functions, history settings, and prompting features. All things that make fish even more wonderful. But what else would be wonderful is if you smash that like button for me to get more people to see videos like this. And then think about subscribing below if you're enjoying this video. You might as well so you don't miss another one. Let's now talk about whether they were actually successful importing and did they have any benefits from this. Well, I'm excited to tell you that Fish 4.0 B1, the beta one, was released about five days ago, December 17th, 2024. This is a draft release of the beta, which is of course not complete yet, but Fish's core code has been officially ported over in the last year completely from C++ to Rust. That's why we saw 71 or some odd percent at the beginning of the video saying that the open source project is now officially in Rust. That is a wild goal that they were able to accomplish here, including notable improvements and fixes along the way, which are fish now requests X terms, modify other keys, keyboard encoding. Fish can also now be built, built as a self installing binary. This means it can be easily built on one system and copied over to another, which is also fantastic as some of us have multiple systems and can now easily transfer things over. A new function was added. Fish should add to history, can be overridden to decide whether a command should be added to the history. For more privacy context here, we can now decide which specific functionality, which specific functions and history of commands are actually made by even specifying which commands we don't want to show up in the history. Kind of cool. Control C during command input no longer prints out the, the caret C bindings now have a mix of special inputs and functions and shell commands. So bind control G command ex works finally as expected. Special input functions undo history, no longer truncates and many other deals. Of course, there are some deprecations and remove features that they felt were unnecessary. A ton of scripting improvements were made over the year, but some of the most important ones were the interactive improvements, auto suggestions, up arrow, search matches, command abbreviations, and much, much more have seen improvement over the last year as well, including improved bindings, completions, improved terminal support, and finally a note for distributors. 
Fish has been ported to Rust. This means significant change in dependencies which are listed in the readme file. In short, Rust 1.7 or greater is required. C++ compiler is no longer needed, although a C compiler is still required for some C glue code and tests. And now we get to see whether or not we actually see the benefits of moving over to Rust. This is overall an exciting process, and I'm excited to keep following Fish Shell to figure out whether or not they actually recognize and see these benefits by porting over. How well will the project see adoption from new developers? Will it see a bump in de developer productivity because it is in a modern language now? How's that memory safety and concurrency safety going to benefit things? These are all questions that still need to kind of be answered. It's definitely important to fish in other projects as well. Although I don't think this can quite be done with a lot of projects. And I'm quite surprised that they were able to do it in under a year. Hopefully everyone's happy on the fish shell project team. And now they get the long-term sustainability that they wanted. Fewer bugs and crashes. Hopefully it levels up the developer experience and simplifies compilation. But I really don't want to underestimate the accomplishment in under a year. To move over such a complex project like fish from C++ within a year is an absolutely huge accomplishment. This introduced extensive scripting capabilities and numerous other new integrations via system libraries that are now available. This team clearly has good project management coordination around and among developers. Hopefully the lower barrier of entry for contributors makes for developer and community growth here in Fish. I'm excited to continue to use it and see this modernized code base as this is a clear demonstration of exceptional planning teamwork and the power of modern programming tools. Even though they say it's the command line for the 90s, they're still thinking into the future and bringing us a fantastic shell for the modern day. Again, this was a very ambitious task and there was a lot of pushback at the beginning. The overall open source and Linux community sentiment is of course mixed again. Some positive, some negative, with the community citing ease of development and rust, touching upon the some of the pain points of C++. As we know, C++ definitely has its pain points. It was even tried in the Linux kernel development and very shortly lived. And people are also excited to just see some modernization here and see it as a step to future-proof this specific shell. The negative sentiment, though, is just skepticism of the Rust community's enthusiasm to change everything over to Rust and see this is another opportunity to bash things. That's right, bash shell. And of course, there's concerns over this direction in the fact that they're saying Adding Rust might create further divergence, complicating its adoption in other environments. Really the important things are that the developer experience is still great, that we still get great usability from the shell, and that it kind of makes logical sense here if they want to really modernize things and get away from using C++. Either way, I want to get your thoughts about Fish going over to Rust. Do you think there's going to be more projects like this in the future? Do you know of any currently active ones in progress of switching over to Rust? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you haven't already and you've made it this far, thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. Please smash that like button as you clearly enjoyed it. Also, take a moment to subscribe below so you can follow more videos like this. You wouldn't want to miss the next one. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another one. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.